The Colorado is the lifeblood of the region. It waters some of the country's fastest growing cities, nourishes some of our most fertile fields, and powers $1.4 trillion in annual economic activity. For more than a century, the Colorado River has been referred to as the lifeblood of the American Southwest. It cuts across deserts, propels economies, powers towns, irrigates farmland, and satisfies the thirst of roughly 40 million people. From the Grand Canyon's towering cliffs to the engineering marvel of the Hoover Dam, this river is more than simply a natural feature. It is the cornerstone of modern civilization. What if the dirt underneath it was concealing a secret? Something old, something living, something volatile. In an unusual and unsettling action, the U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, issued a red alert, not for drought or dam failure, but for what they uncovered beneath the riverbed itself. A sleeping power is waking under Colorado's glittering flow, and its awakening has the potential to revolutionize all we thought we knew about the region. Geologists discovered the abnormality during what was intended to be a routine subsurface check. However, the data revealed something unprecedented. Chambers changing, gases increasing, and heat growing in an area previously thought to be geologically stable. The ramifications extend well beyond science. If what is happening beneath the Colorado River continues, we may see dam collapses, ecological collapse, water shortages, and possibly the emergence of a new volcanic system right under America's feet. This is not only a scientific puzzle, it is a high-stakes race against time, and it all starts with a few tiny vibrations beneath the river which refuses to remain silent. It began quietly, with USGS personnel conducting normal surveys of sediment layers beneath the Colorado Riverbed. After decades of drought and silt accumulation, experts were studying how erosion affected the waterway's durability. But what their equipment detected wasn't deteriorating. There was something living and moving beneath the Earth's crust. Using ground-penetrating radar and seismic imaging, the researchers discovered fissures and hollow chambers where there should have been solid rock. These were not the typical fissures generated by tension or sediment changes. They were uneven, layered, and heated. Thermal sensors detected substantial increases in heat signatures, greatly beyond predicted standards for that depth. Initially, they were ignored as isolated hotspots, but days later, plumes of gas were discovered leaking upward via thin fractures. These plumes comprise sulfur compounds and carbon dioxide, which are often linked with geothermal activities or volcanic activity. Initially, the attitude was one of scientific inquiry. However, when additional data came in, the picture became darker. The movement was not stagnant. It was speeding. Pressures in the Earth's bottom layers were fluctuating unexpectedly, indicating a system developing from inside. This was not simply geological noise. It was geological stress. Even more concerning, was the revelation that these underlying changes were occurring beneath a vital stretch of the river, one that directly controls water flow into Lake Mead and Lake Powell, which were already on the verge of disaster owing to years of misuse and climate change. This new oddity was not simply a natural occurrence. It was a wild card with the ability to destabilize everything above it. And as they researched it, it became clear that the Colorado River was more than just a supply of water. It sat atop a ticking time bomb. The Colorado Plateau has long been considered one of North America's most geologically stable areas. In geological terms, this tract of desert was considered quiet, if not uninteresting, as opposed to the blazing fury of Yellowstone or the dangerous fault lines of California. That notion is now being erased. As the USGS expanded monitoring, a new and concerning notion emerged. The uneven fissures and increasing gases were not the result of tectonic movements. They were early indications of intrusion. Hot rock, probably magma, forcing its way into the Earth's crust. Geophysicists discovered electromagnetic anomalies, which are variations in the magnetic field caused by the flow of superheated, electrically conducting material beneath. Seismic patterns change from deep, rolling quakes to shallow, fast micro-tremors which clustered in a small corridor under the river. These weren't tectonic, but rather the crawl of something molten. What's the conclusion? Under the Colorado River, a new magma chamber is developing. This chamber, which is fed by a deep mantle plume, a stream of heat and molten rock that pushes upward through the crust, is too small to erupt. 
Not yet, but it's expanding, and with each change, it puts additional strain on the delicate geology above. This level of progress is almost unheard of in this section of the country. It is not only scientifically odd, but also strategically perilous. Dams, towns, aquifers, and ecosystems were all created with the expectation that the earth here would remain stable. That presumption has now been broken. The presence of even a dormant volcanic system under the Colorado River has the potential to rewrite the laws of infrastructure, water management, and emergency preparation throughout the area. As temperatures increase and gases accumulate, the real issue becomes, how long will it take before this hidden giant breaks through the surface? What is happening beneath the Colorado River is more than simply a scientific anomaly. It may be a disaster for infrastructure. The Colorado River serves more than simply the scenery. It supplies Lake Mead and Lake Powell, powers hydroelectric dams, supports millions of people, and irrigates over 5 million acres of agriculture. Any instability under the surface might be devastating. Start with the dams. The Hoover Dam and Glen Canyon Dam were constructed using mid-20th century engineering. They were built to endure pressure, but not the sort caused by subsurface magma activity, thermal expansion, and gaseous upheaval. If the rock supporting these structures begins to deform or weaken owing to heat and chemical change, the dam's structural integrity may collapse, literally. A rupture in either dam would not occur gradually. It would be an unmanageable torrent with billions of gallons of water rushing across cities, villages, and farms. Las Vegas, Phoenix, and possibly Los Angeles may see power shortages, water restrictions, and widespread evacuation. Agriculture in the Imperial Valley might be eliminated overnight. Then there's the environment. Rising geothermal heat and gas emissions harm more than just rock. They may acidify water, kill fragile aquatic species, and change the chemistry of entire ecosystems. Fish such as the endangered humpback chub, as well as many bird species that rely on the river's flow, are already at risk. A quick change in temperature or water quality might entirely eliminate them. Even the atmosphere is shifting. Sulfur-rich gases such as hydrogen sulfide are seeping up through the riverbed. These may erode metal infrastructure, overload filtration systems, and harm wildlife, often without notice. In summary, this is not only a geological occurrence. It's a multifaceted issue that threatens the most important systems in the American Southwest. The Colorado River has long been a political battlefield. Seven states share its waters, and for decades, talks over who gets what have teetered on the brink of war. However, with the USGS Red Alert, that delicate equilibrium may collapse entirely. Every drop of Colorado River water is used by farmers in California, tribal communities in Arizona, towns in Nevada, and industries across the West. Any disturbance to its flow, whether caused by a dam failure, geological deformation, or pollution, might completely destabilize current water accords. Legal experts are already warning of a geological force majeure, a natural occurrence so large that it might invalidate current water rights and contracts. This opens the door to a potentially decades-long cycle of litigation, emergency talks, and finger-pointing. Not only are states fighting for the river, but federal agencies, tribes, and environmental groups are all getting involved. The Department of the Interior, the Bureau of Reclamation, and FEMA have all quietly begun developing contingency plans. These range from rerouting water flow to emergency dam releases and population relocation situations. These proposals are not purely theoretical. They are being discussed in closed-door sessions around Washington. Meanwhile, tribal elders worry that their ancestral lands and holy places, which have previously been imperiled by drought and resource extraction, are now under attack from an uninvited geological force. Many people view this as more than just an environmental problem. It betrays the promise that the river, long seen as a constant, will always be present. Now that promise is crumbling, and what comes out might spark one of the most serious water battles in American history. While the processes developing under the Colorado River represent a significant threat, they have also opened the door to a once-in-a-lifetime scientific opportunity, the ability to witness the birth of a geological system in real time. What makes this so unique is that usually magma chambers are discovered after the fact, after an eruption, or decades of seismic activity. However, 
For the first time, scientists are witnessing the early phases of a subterranean awakening. It's like seeing into the Earth's womb and seeing how mountain ranges, thermal vents, and volcanic plains are formed. Institutions such as MIT, Stanford, and Caltech have sent teams to the region. They are using fiber optic acoustic sensors, drone mounted spectrometers, and even satellite interferometry to track surface deformation down to the millimeter. These technologies, if proved under pressure, have the potential to transform how we follow underground dangers throughout the world, from Iceland to Indonesia. However, the consequences extend far further. Planetary science is now in play. NASA researchers are looking at how geothermal activity under a river system might help us comprehend circumstances on Mars or Jupiter's ice moons where subsurface heat could indicate liquid water and life. In an unexpected twist, the same magma that threatens dams and towns may also increase our understanding of the world. It's a sobering reminder that nature's most perilous times may also be the most instructive. But time is running short. The mechanisms we rely on were not designed with magma in mind, and the earth below is not waiting. The Colorado River has long been a symbol of tenacity, a blue ribbon slashing across harsh deserts, supporting life despite all obstacles. But behind that connection, something old is stirring. The USGS's red alert is more than just a warning. It is a wake-up call. For ages, we've created civilizations on the notion that the earth beneath our feet is solid, rivers would flow as they should, and nature's most powerful forces will remain buried. However, this discovery proves otherwise. The earth isn't static. It breathes, moves, and occasionally reminds us who actually has control. Whether this anomaly develops into a full-fledged volcanic system or settles into a new type of geothermal activity, one thing is certain. We have entered unknown terrain. Infrastructure, ecosystems, and entire ways of life are being threatened, not by war or politics, but by a silent force rising from below. Communities across the West must now prepare not only for droughts and depleted reservoirs, but also for geological instability, which no one anticipated coming. Scientists must compete to comprehend a system in motion, and politicians must adjust more quickly than ever before. What happens next will not only determine the Colorado River's destiny, but it may also reshape our understanding of land, water, energy, and danger in a fast-changing world. Because the river that once supplied life now hides a monster under the surface, emerging with each passing day. And the monster is more than simply a menace. It's a message from the Earth itself.